is Jerry Mischewski with Balanced Community Slack Science. Uh, we're out here today in sunny Davis, California, and we're going to test the CT Sparrow as used as a slackline brake, or a brake for a slackline pulley system. Uh, we'll take an in-depth look and, and then see um, just how efficient it is and how easy it is to release tension. So let's get started. All right, so the CT Sparrow uh, this is a really nice brake. Um, it's got a good size to it, and the profile size is really nice, which is great for uh, embedding in a 5 to 1 pulley system, especially with the SMC 3 inch doubles. Um, that's really nice. And it's got this really cool feature here this uh, little bracket for redirecting the rope when you're detensioning to add friction. That's really nice because it makes it uh, very controllable to release. And uh, some other nice notable features here um, is the, the swinging side plate with the clippable, clippable plate here. So you can leave it anchored, load your rope, and then clip it to your connector. So you don't have to remove this from uh, your connector when you're installing the rope. Um, the handle is very sturdy, nice and long, um, and it feels really, really strong. It's a strong plastic, and it has a locking feature just like some of uh, the Petzl brakes on the market. Um, you can clamp it down here, and the, and the cam is locked in place. It's still able to, to move up and down, but yeah, I'm not sure if that actually works. We'll have to test it. Um, but uh, I can see that releasing is really nice. You can see there. Got a lot of torque here with this big handle. Um, that'll make it really good for, for uh, releasing tension. And the cam size is really, it's pretty big. Um, you'll see here the ID. It's got a, a similar size cam. Um, the overall size it's actually very similar to the ID as well. The handles are a bit different, they sized. About the same length, but this one's got a lot smaller of a footprint. Um, yeah. And another cool feature that I noticed about this is when you're installing the rope, there's this little, um, I don't know what you call it, but like a little flap thing. It doesn't flap, but like a little, uh, overhang here that when you're installing the rope you'll see here when the rope's installed this can't come out especially with larger sizes larger sized ropes because of this overhang here the loaded side of the rope can't come out of the device unless you take that out of this side first and then rotate the cam down to take it out it's much more noticeable on a larger size rope. This is 10 mil. Um, but yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. But uh, I'm really curious to see just how efficient this device is and how well it does with detensioning at high loads. So um, let's get started with that. Put it in my pulley system and uh, see how, how well it does. All right, we've got the Sparrow in the pulley system. Note my setup here. We got Mantra Mark II, Alpine Weblock 2.2, 5 to 1 with the SMC 3 inch doubles, uh, 11 mil Access Pro static rope. Uh, we're using the embedded brake technique, as you can see here the CT Sparrow and 5 16 inch twist shackle. Uh, I'll go into that a little bit in a little bit here. And uh, as you can see, we got the dyno, and our starting tension is about 275 pounds. Um, so, some things to note here. Um, as you can see, the last strand of rope going into the brake is on the top, coming from the top of the pulley. And I usually have it coming from the bottom because of uh, the multiplier, but the reason I didn't do that is You'll see here, the rope coming from the becket here is going to the top of the pulley over here. And if I had switched, if I had turned this over and had the handle on the same side 
where the rope from the becket of the moving pulley is entering the static pulley, I would get a lot of friction between the handle and this strand of rope. And so whenever you're reeving your pulleys and um, you need to make sure that the handle is on the opposite side of the rope that's coming from the becket of your moving pulley. So in this case, it's entering the top of this pulley, so the brake needs to be on the bottom. And when it's configured like that, the last strand of rope is going to go up through the moving pulley. And so if I had switched the pulley system around, the, the handle would be on top, and then the, the last strand would be coming out the bottom. Uh, it's pretty important because you'll lose a lot of friction, or you'll gain a lot of friction, by having the handle rub on the ropes. When it's configured like this, it still rubs a little bit, as you can see there, but not as bad as it would if it were the other way. Um, also, you can see that it doesn't sit so well on these small twist shackles. Better would be a twist quick link, which is what I'm looking into at the moment. Um, it would center it a lot better with the becket, and you would get even less rubbing, I feel like. I don't have a twist quick link to test that, but I can see here that it's sitting at the bottom of the shackle, which is causing it to rub these strands of rope. That could affect our efficiency a little bit, but we will see. So uh, let's get started with tensioning and see how that goes. All right, it's done tensioning. Uh, very impressed. I like this brake. I got 2,914 pounds, which if you recall, the Petzl ID, I was able to get 2,714 or so. So about 200 pounds more. Um, and now that we're under tension, you can see here, there's no, ro there's no rubbage with the handle. And the handle's really easy to access. You can see here, for releasing. We won't do that yet. But uh, yeah, the tensioning was really smooth. Um, beyond 2,000 pounds was a bit difficult, which it should be. All the brakes were difficult at that point. But um, I really like this. It's really streamlined. Um, it fits super well inside these pulleys. I think this is a great setup for for any length line, really, up to the working load of the pulleys, which is 12 kilonewtons, or like 2,600 pounds. Um, but I'm interested in how well it detensions, especially with this little clip here. You can run the tail through the clip and detension. That should be really interesting. So uh, let's try that out and see how well it does.
All right, so I got the tension released. Um, the initial pull, the initial opening of the handle was a bit hard, but I was at pretty high tension. So that's understandable. But um, once I got it open, super controllable, really easy. I really like this uh, clip here, or this redirect. It reminds me of the um, MPD. Uh, it's super nice. Um, I also noticed that when we were at low tensions, like under 500 pounds in the whole system, uh, it's really hard to release tension. Like I had to jitter with the handle, I don't know if you saw it, but um, yeah, low tensions are, is a bit weird. I'll have to get used to that. I think there's a trick. Um, but yeah, other than that, releasing is great. Uh, let's do an overview of, of the CT Sparrow. Uh, I just wanted to show you real quick that with this larger 11 mil rope, uh, what I was referring to earlier, it's impossible for this rope to get out right here because of this overhang thing. And so in order to take it out, you have to take it out of the bottom first. And then rotate the cam down and then release the rope. That's a pretty cool feature. Um, I don't know why it'd be useful, but it's there uh, just in case you need it. So all in all, the CT Sparrow is a great braking device and I think it fully replaces the Petzl ID. It's got a better quality build. It's really robust. You can feel, when you hold it in your hands, you can feel just how solid constructed it is. The metals are really nice compared to the ID, which feels and sounds just flimsy. Um, and looking on the inside, the cams are the same size, or roughly. Um, the CT Sparrow has this really cool redirect thing that is just a great addition to an already fantastic brake. And the, the profile size, very small compared to the ID. It's almost, I'd say, 50% less thick. And um, yeah, it's lightweight. The weight is a bit, a bit less than the ID, I believe. The handle's really well made and the anchor hole, it accepts a, a variety of sizes of connectors. Not as many as the ID because the size is a bit bigger here as you can see. Um, but virtually any of the connectors we carry in the shop will work with this. Um, and it embeds so nicely inside the SMC pulleys. Just a solid addition to a great pulley system. Uh, I would highly recommend this uh, they retail for $199.95 in the BC shop compared to $235 for the ID. Um, yeah, and they'll be available this week, so keep your eyes open. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, you can view more product reviews and tutorial videos at slackscience.com or balancedcommunity.com. And this is Jerry Mischewski again. Uh, thanks again.